Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, and welcome to Embracing Your Essence on Lilydale Radio. And as you are joining in, please do say hello. Let me know you're here. Let me see who you are. Give me your name, where you're from. Definitely say hello as you're logging in. We are to be talking about the soul again tonight and I will just give you some details about some things first before we get to that so if you're just joining in I'm Colleen Vanderzyden I am a registered medium here at Lilydale Assembly I'm also a certified intuitive life coach a spiritual teacher and the author of the book courageously you look at that so if you're looking for a Christmas gift here's a good one you could ask for that so as you're coming on do say hello and every week on this show I talk about something that can help you live your best life so you can be happier and have the li life you deserve the joyful life you deserve so hello everybody thank you so much for joining me tonight hi Denise okay everybody's joining so fast it's going by me so fast Pamela and Laura oh I love Ashley she's amazing isn't she um, and Lori and Amy and Jennifer and Mary and Angie hello everybody thank you so much for joining me we will be talking about the soul again tonight for a little bit and we are going to uh, answer some questions from last week you guys had amazing questions from last week and there were so many there I didn't see them as we were live so I wrote some down we'll talk about some of them today and we will get take new questions as we're going as well but before we get to that I've got some opportunities and some announcements to give you number one on my website I have finally added more options for people to make appointments for soul readings and for intuitive life coaching so if you are looking for a longer soul reading than the two or three minutes I give you here you can make an appointment on my website ColleenVanderZyden.com or BeCourageouslyYou.com will take you there just as well and I'm looking to see who else has joined me thank you so much you guys for coming on tonight and Jacqueline nice to see you and Therese and Mary and Kim and Penny and Kelly hi Kelly and Deborah and Annette nice to see you guys hi Barb haven't seen you in forever I hope everything is well with all of you guys another thing that you need to know about is that I will be live on Celeste's show on Thursday at 10 in the morning we are going to be talking about my book so if you want to watch that and learn more about my book or ask some questions uh, feel free to call in and you can ask questions it's 10 o'clock Thursday morning should be live on Lilydale's page should be live on my page and it should be live on Celeste Elliott's page as well so you've got lots of opportunities and let's see what else we have to talk about oh Greg is doing this amazing workshop on Friday night called hopeful holidays have you ever had that time where the holidays come by and you're just in a bad mood or you've had a bad experience in the past and the holidays holidays have kind of lost their joy for you I know I've had a couple of those Christmases myself and he is going to be doing this free workshop Friday night from 7 to 10 Eastern Time 7 to 10 online you can register and go for free and he is going to show you and talk about all sorts of different ways so that you can have the happy joyful holidays again even if things are going on in your life and it's not going to be one of those things where he says well just be happy because it's the holidays no it's not that he's going to actually give you some really practical information that's going to help you get back to your joy so if you've been struggling or you've been having a little bit of dread when it comes to the holidays sign up for that workshop he will post the link in here in the comments uh, so you can register directly from there but you can also go to my website and go to the book page book appointment page and it's the it's right on the bottom there and you'll be able to register and it is free and he is uh, posting it now so it is free so you can go and watch that Friday 7 to 10 it's amazing okay and let's see you guys are already starting to ask questions I'm gonna talk a little bit about the soul first and one more thing my courageously you group coaching program the early bird deadline is Thursday December 1st at midnight if you are thinking about joining the courageously you group coaching program which is all about being the best version of you getting guidance and support from me as well as from the other people in the small group and it is a small group it's limited in numbers because you get your individual coaching and so much coaching you get at least 14 hours of coaching if you're interested in doing that I recommend you register by Thursday night at midnight because you will get a hundred dollars off the regular price you will also get a little bag of gifts because I like giving things away and you will also get a free individual coaching session so if you're interested in that and you've been thinking about it sitting on the fence a little bit I still have a few seats left now is the time and you will want to sign up for that go to my website and you can see it right at the top of the page courageous Liu group coaching click on that it'll take you right there and it's my website ColleenVanderZyden.com and be courageously you.com so 
let's get to what we're going to do tonight. We are going to be talking about the soul, revealing the soul and strengthening your soul connection. I will be doing some mini soul readings. I will talk a little bit first because I do want to answer some of the questions from last week. And also Spirit directed me to talk about a couple things. So we will do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we will get to the soul readings, and we are going to just have a ball here today. So when it comes time for the soul readings, I will explain how it works. So you got to hang out a little bit here. If you want a soul reading, you must be live on my page, which is Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach. If you are watching on Lilydale Assembly's page, you need to come over to my page if you want a reading. I'll announce this again later when we get closer. And if you're watching on the Spiritual Growth and Support Group page, you need to come over to my page so you can get a reading because I'm going, I need to communicate with you through the chat and I can only see one chat at the time and that would be on my page. So what we are going to talk about tonight is, hello, Lori. I haven't seen you in forever either. And Paula and Bobby, thank you all for joining me. Um, okay, I'm just looking to see if there's comments I need to be talking about right away. I am having a great day, Cindy. Thank you. It's been really fun. Um, watching live from your page for the first time. Yay, Ellie. Yay. Okay, good. So, um, <clears throat> we are going to talk about the soul. So how do we, people ask some questions like this related to what we talked about last week. This is our fourth session talking about the soul and it's been so much fun, hasn't it? So how do we reveal our soul and how do we strengthen that connection? So first off, remember the soul is always present. It does not disappear. What can happen, however, is it can get a little bit buried under life stuff. You know how it goes? So much is going on and we just feel like our energy is just draining from our bodies. But our soul does not disappear. It is always present. No matter what is going on in your lives, it's still there. So our soul will try to reach us in different ways. Now it's funny, I talk about the soul as though it's a different entity than ourselves. Our soul, when we think of our soul, we think of it being inside ourselves, you know, the light or in, in our heart and that kind of thing. But we'll talk about it a little bit so it's a little bit detached. You know, the soul as though it's a separate entity always tries to reach us in lots of different ways. So we can have these subtle nudges, which we would call intuition. We might just have feelings about things. You know, the soul is always trying to guide us and it will guide us in those different ways with the intuition. Hi, Amy, thanks for watching. And another way the soul can get to us and get our attention is that we will have this feeling of yearning. We might be yearning for something more. We feel like there should be more to our lives. Something is missing. So we have this sense of yearning. We may not know what it is or where we're heading, but what that is is your soul is basically calling to you to help you kind of start looking at yourself. It's either to find out who you truly are at the soul level, or the soul could be trying to get your attention so you can start to move into a purpose, into something thing that is important to you at your soul level. Now this yearning can be very uncomfortable, right? Because we're uncertain. We don't know what to do. We don't know who we are. We may not know what our purpose is. But what happens is the soul is using our emotions, that yearning of emotions, to move us in a direction where we try to figure out what's going on. And it gets us uncomfortable just enough that we might be opening our eyes to new opportunities. Something might pop into our awareness. Uh, we might be looking for a teacher or a guide or somebody to help us along our way. Sometimes, and this is fun for me to talk about, sometimes we try to get answers from a psychic. And I cannot tell you how many times I have had people come into my room and say to me, basically, just tell me who, my, who I am and what my purpose is, right? Now, I can certainly give people impressions or guidance, and it's not a wholly a bad thing to ask a psychic these questions. <clears throat> but... I don't want it to become something people rely on. There was a period of time I had a couple of people who kept coming back repeatedly because they wanted me to tell them what to do, what was coming, what to do next. And so it's not something you want to rely on, but it's certainly interesting to do because really revealing and connecting with your soul is something that has to come from within you, something where you have to, have to decide to listen to the soul and take its guidance. And of course, um, this is something that we're going to talk more about for just a few minutes. Don't worry, I'll give lots of time for readings tonight. Just a few minutes, I will talk about how we can connect with our soul even more. 
Lori is asking, is that what is addressed in my coaching sessions? Uh, yes, so my soul reading sessions are all about you at the soul level, who you are at the soul level, who, um, what uh, traps you may have come across because of who you are at the soul level. And I always use this example, if you're an empath, you will have a narcissistic relationship. It's a law. So that kind of thing. And we discuss that and how you can move forward. Same thing in the coaching program. We talk about who you are at the soul level so that you can reclaim your soul's power so you can move forward using your inner power to create the happy life you deserve. So that's what we do here. So when we are another time, I got to talk about another time when we're connecting with our soul and our soul is getting our attention. When we have a tragedy in our lives and we're barely surviving and many, many, if not all of us have had that experience where something has happened in our lives that was just so tragic, so heartbreaking, so difficult that we were just, it took everything we could to just get through each minute of each day. You know, we might have lost somebody or we maybe we're having significant health challenges, whatever it might be. And there, that and also that feeling where hope is gone, where we don't feel like we have hope, that our lives are falling apart and it will never be better. When so much of our physical existence is stripped away with losses and huge problems, what happens is our soul is, is like it's laid bare. The physical stuff has been removed so that our soul can actually be revealed to us. And that can help us as we move forward. Out of desperation, so many of us will pray and do the help me prayer. And I call that the most powerful prayer there is when we say help me, because we are giving up our control and our force. We're surrendering and we're allowing God if you want to call it God or the divine or the universal energy to help us the help me prayer is very important when we do this prayer we are connecting with our soul because our soul is one with that divine energy of course and when we have those tragedies and things that happen that lay our soul bare, it's an opportunity for us. And out of desperation, we will dig deep, as deep as we can, to try to find our strength because there's nothing else we can do. Once we get past the survival mode, sometimes we can't do that during survival mode. You know how that goes. Something is so shocking or overwhelming, we can't. We can't. But as time goes, we, we really do start digging deep. And that's when we might find people who support us. But also we might have that soul connection that brings us the energy and the power from the other side. Many people who have experienced something a traumatic or tragic, um, after they've recovered, they realize how strong they actually were. And sometimes they're surprised to find that out, right? We're like, I can't believe I made it through that. How did it happen? And it's because your soul continued to support you through this. Your soul being connected to the divine universal energy has unlimited strength and power that is there to help you. So your soul will bring you that strength to get through everything, even if something is going on today, even if you're still trying to recover from something in the past. With this, sometimes people will experience a new awakening of who they truly are. And then some will change their lives as well. Your soul is always there, ready to guide you, ready to support you, and ready to be there for you at every moment. Now your soul is that energy of love and light and strength and power and connection. So it's always there. I'm going to talk in a second about how to discover this, and then we'll get to a couple questions that we had from last week, and then we will talk about, and we'll do some readings. But I want to go up and check some of the comments to make sure, because sometimes it starts scrolling, and I may not be able to go back and get it until later. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get too far into this, Angel, but you can be a life coach and a medium, and I'm not conjuring the dead. I'm communicating with them. And Jesus did teach us that we are all one, and Jesus did teach us that we are all connected, and Jesus did teach us that we can create miracles just as he did. And so we are not conquering over the dead. We are being one within the kingdom of God, is what that is. So, hi, Arlene. Nice to see you. You are on my list of contact. It is hard work, isn't it, Rebecca, to find who we really are and to connect with the soul? Okay, and we are going to talk about this. So, thank you, Cindy. You are lovely. Uh, I talked about that. So, we are good. Okay, I'm just scrolling real quickly right now. 
Uh, yes, Rebecca's saying she's been in survival mode most of her life, but that is changing. It is hard work. It is hard work. But if we, yes, yes. So Mary is saying I'm breaking up a lot. We have had internet issues today, so y'all send me positive energies. I am plugged in and everything. Everything shut down in my house, basically. We have had some internet issues all day. So cross your fingers, send positive energy so that we can stay connected here. Uh, thank you. So I best get to what we're talking about, right? So I don't don't lose you all and all of you make sure you all plugged in as well so to discover your soul one way you can do this well several ways but one is to look at the times you have been love light strength power and connection because that's your soul your soul is love light strength inner power connection the oneness when you are kind and when you are caring you demonstrate love and light that is your soul that's who you are to connect with it further you just use those qualities when you're resilient when you're doing the best you can that is your strength and that is your inner power your inner power is when you're in that energetic flow, when you're in the oneness of your soul connected to the big energy. When you're in that power, in that flow, you know how it feels when you're in the zone and life is going good and you just, you, there's a certain feeling we get when we're in that. That's connecting with your soul and living from your soul's energy. There's an expansiveness with the energy. You just feel more open. Uh, there's a quiet confidence. You're secure. You know, you're not doubting yourself. You're not questioning. It's a feeling where you believe in and trust yourself. It's a certain vibe that you'll get. And the more you think about the soul and choose to live from that perspective, you'll start to feel it more and more. And you'll know when you're in that flow. It's not a forcing, not a controlling. It's not trying to control life or other people. It's not judgment or fear. It's just you in your soul's power. Today in my newsletter, I talked about letting go. And I am going to do a letting go uh, radio show in a bit of time. Uh, next week, week after, in the next few weeks, I'm going to do a letting go, how to let go of the pain of the past, how to let go of all sorts of stuff. But if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about letting go, if you go to my website, um, you can sign up for my newsletter and then you'll be able to get the newsletters and I can send you that one if you want to see it. I will just send it to you. So you just let me know. Um, with that so when you sh to live from your soul and strengthen that connection you choose to live from your love so when you're choosing to respond to something from your love how do you respond are you judgmental toward other people are you feeling superior that you know more than they do are you trying to control them and tell them how to live or do you respond with kindness and caring even if you disagree with them even if you you don't believe what they're saying is true whatever it is if you get upset about something, you take a step back and you go, how would I respond from my soul's perspective? What you're doing is you're choosing to live from your inner power. You're choosing to live from your strength. You're choosing to believe, your, believe in yourself. And you understand that that connection comes from oneness. Amy is saying uh, mindfulness is becoming everyday event for me over the past couple of years and really that's what it is. Uh, it is mindfulness paying attention. So last week a question Nikki asked was how do I become one with my soul and communicate with it daily? And part of this is part of what I've said but also it is being mindful. It is being checking in with yourself. You check in and see what is true for you and I mean true for you at the soul level. What is really true there? So you stop, you pause, you check in. To become one with your soul, you make the intention, you set the intention that you want to, really get to know yourself at the soul level. Communicating with your soul daily involves simply wanting to connect with who you are at that level. The more you understand yourself, the more you know who you are, the easier it becomes to recognize when you're in your soul's energy, which is positive, light, love, caring, all of those things, or when you're in the fear, ego mindset, where you're doubting, you're judging, you're feeling uncomfortable and uncertain, those kinds of things. So to become one with your soul is to open your mind up to the number one, that there is a soul, number two, that it is there and it has not gone away, then decide what you think your soul is like, and it is always based in some form of love and light and that connection to the divine energy. And then you'd be mindful. 
as Amy talked about, be mindful and check in with yourself. What makes sense to you? What feels right to you? Ah, yes, good. So that was a question she asked. Now, I think she also asked this question. I feel like I'm blocked from my spiritual gifts and intuition. If so, how can I unblock so I can communication from spirit can come through? So if we are living from our soul's perspective as best we can, and we do not have to be perfect at this by any means, we do not have to be perfect. All we have to do is intend to do our best and come from the purity of our heart and soul. So we're coming from the attitude of service, wanting to be there for people, coming from the love perspective. So sometimes we get blocked, we feel like we're blocked from our spiritual gifts and intuition just because of life, okay? And we may have had some experiences where we doubted ourselves, and this is perfectly normal and natural as a human. So to kind of overcome these perceptions would be to choose to live from your soul's perspective and move into trust that your soul is connected to that energy. And if your soul is connected to the limitless energy, that means your soul and you have access to everything you want. Your spiritual gifts, your intuition, communication, whatever it might be. So if any of you are interested in something like that, I suggest that people affirm or intend, make an intention that is something along the lines of, I have clear communication from spirit or clear com communication from spirit easily flows through me. So if we said, said something like this every morning, clear communication from spirit easily throws, flows through me, I'll say it again without my stumbling, clear communication from spirit easily flows through me you'll start to feel that energy because you're setting that intention in motion. You're telling the universe, you're telling the, the divine energy, yes, I want you to help me and I want to be of service. I want to help other people and an intention will help. Okay, I'm going to answer a question because it caught my interest, Mary. How can I get beyond self-loathing to even connect with my own soul? I know this sounds stupid, but how can I have a good soul when I feel like I've made so many mistakes? Mary, 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 Mary. Number one, that's not stupid to even label that. Don't We don't want to do that. No, because it's such a good question because so many of us have experienced that self-loathing. And it can be hard for us to believe that at our core level, we are amazing, beautiful, wonderful, loving, light beings within our soul. It can be so hard for us to believe that. If we have struggled in our past where we may have made some mistakes, and I'm putting those in quotes, mistakes, maybe we've made some choices that we are not proud of now. Maybe we made some decisions that were not the best decisions, but it is what it is, and we can't change the past, right? So what we want to do is move into letting go of, of, of the self-loathing. Self we want to let go of the idea, because at some level, so many of us believe we have to beat ourselves up for not having done a better job in the past, that we have to beat ourselves up for not knowing better. I like to talk about forgiveness with that a bit, and Greg is very big on forgiveness, and he does a whole workshop on forgiveness um, in Utah. We just came back um, in November, and we'll be doing it again in November 2023, first weekend in November, if any of you are struggling with self-forgiveness or forgiving others. Um, but we need to forgive ourselves. We need to be willing to let go of the energy. This doesn't mean we approve of everything that's ever happened to us or that uh, approve of everything we've done, but what it is is we're making a choice to let go of that energy negatively impacting our lives and getting in our way. For you, Mary, would be to open your mind up to who you are at the soul level. And I talk about this usually with most of my coaching people and my coaching group. It's literally the first thing we do is we talk about who we are at that level. We start to explore who we are and look for those positive qualities within ourselves because we all have them. But because of life and situations and our own self-doubt and self-judgment, we have forgotten 
who we are and we want to start to learn to shift our perspective so I would suggest Mary for you to start looking at those qualities that are amazing within you and since you're here um, since you're here, and Greg just said, ah, the F word, yes, forgiveness. Uh, since you're here, let me just touch in with you right now and do a little mini soul reading for you there, Mary, because I feel like this is very important for you. And my questions that I still have on the list, we can do another time if I run out of time, no problem. So Mary, I know at your soul level, you are an amazing person. I know that you have a great deal of kindness and caring within you. And I know this because sometimes people who have that self-judgment, they get um, they 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 don't understand how they weren't caring to themselves so being caring is an important quality for you it is very important for you and for you to direct that caringness back at yourself is actually doing love toward yourself it's helping you look at yourself with kindness and with that caring it is such a beautiful quality and okay it also brings you much grace. There's a grace here with you as well. I have a very strong impression that you are probably a wonderful, wonderful person, that you are there for other people, that you probably self-sacrifice a little bit to be there for other people. I have a feeling that you're also the kind of person that does put other people's needs ahead of your own, which just demonstrates how caring you are. So with this, I want to tell you what I just had posted the other day on my page is that self-care is not selfish. We can find it hard to prioritize ourselves and to look at ourselves kindly, but that would be the direction I would like you to go into, Mary. You have your choice if you want to or not, but I definitely think this. No, not, grace is not you. Okay, I'm not talking about grace and dancing and walking. I'm talking about grace that you extend to other people. And we want to extend the grace to yourself. Um, Debbie, I'm going to answer your question too. Um, oh, that was a good one that Greg just said. Greg said, the vicious inner critic is not our soul talking to us. It actually blocks us from seeing our own light. It truly does. And that is why that is the first thing I do in my coaching program and with private coaching people as we start to discover who you truly are. And which has been the point of the shows, my shows here for the, this week and the last three weeks because we're talking about your soul qualities. And we want to get to the soul qualities so that we can start to see ourselves and diminish that voice of the inner critic. So Debbie, is this similar to thinking positive and telling yourself that you're going to be okay and you will get through this. In a way, it is. Um, I am big on intentions, as many of you know. I love intentions because what we're doing is we're taking the power of our words and we're infusing it, supercharging our words with an emotional feeling. So if something's going on in our lives and we're struggling with it, there are a lot of different intentions we can use, but let's say, um, I don't know, let's just say you're struggling with something. We'll just leave it at that for now and you're not sure what to do next you might set an intention that i trust i will be guided to where i need to go and you set this intention and you feel how you would feel if you were guided to where you need to go and if you truly trusted there would be a feeling of confidence security safety uh, that kind of feeling what happens is that emotion is an energy and that energy charges your intention so here if I say to myself I'm gonna be okay but I don't feel what it would feel like it's basically empty words so to use our words we have to feel what it would feel like and step into it and believe it even if we don't we do our best to do that charges the words and then it helps us get through I hope that helps you a little bit there she gives me a prayer sign okay Amy says that description is you as well so let's talk about that for a second as I'm doing soul readings what will happen is sometimes I'll be talking to one person and other people will go oh my goodness that sounds just like me that sounds like what I need to hear the spirit is and the God energy is very good about putting messages here whether they're mediumship messages you know at a service here at Lilydale or if they are soul messages spirit is very good about bringing through and reaching as many people as possible and that's part of the beauty of doing these mini soul readings is because so many of you can relate 
to them. So let's see. Give the words power and energy. Exactly. Okay. Let me see if there's another question I feel like I should answer. And then maybe I'll just get to the soul readings. That's what I'll do. One more question. Oh, this is an easy one. Um, Joe had asked if identical twins have two completely different souls. And when she first thought that, I thought, what an interesting question. I have never considered this. And then Spirit told me this morning that, yes, they do have different souls. And Spirit also told me that sometimes they have the same soul. So it is both. It, the answer is yes and no. So identical twins can have the same soul and just be so so you know those those twins that are so tight and they they seem really like the same person those would be pretty much the same soul and then there are others that wouldn't be i am sure my own opinion is that there would be some slight differences but i don't know spirit said no so i'm gonna leave that there okay so let's get to the readings if you are watching from lilydale assembly incorporated's page or from the spiritual growth and support group and you are interested in wanting a reading you need to move over here to my page Colleen van der Zyden, medium and intuitive life coach so that I can see the comments because I'm going to talk to you and I'm, you're going to get my attention so that I talk to you and then I like to go back a little bit um, uh, back and forth I might say does this make sense to you tell me whatever uh, so I may do that so as I do this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about soul qualities and these are the soul qualities that grab my attention today I could talk to you next week and have it be totally different but today is what is going on today last week we seemed to have a lot of themes of I think it was gentleness I can't remember totally right now but there we are so I will give you words that describe you I may talk about other things that pop into my head uh, I may do colors and give you meanings of colors as well I tend to describe what I see if something pops into my vision um, and if you want a soul reading all you have to do is write it in the comment you'd like a soul reading I do like when people ask questions that are interesting they get my attention and I do a little bit of teaching at the same time while I do that uh, so anyway let's get to it and see what we got uh, let's go with Arlene first because I feel like Arlene could use us all reading so Arlene hi how are you doing um, <laughs> okay so Arlene oh yes of course your soul is the giving soul of course that is just a fact no question about that you are the kind of person that literally has for your whole life has been a person well okay I don't want to say your whole life because it got hidden for a little bit of time there but for most of your life it has uh, you your goal in life has been to give to help to provide for others and you are truly living your sole purpose and you are the kind of person that uh, well we all know you're very intuitive as well you're very intuitive you have all those abilities we know that that's a fact as well uh, you also you have this sense of a very strong sense of a connection and guidance with you okay you have really worked hard to connect with spirit to guides to God you have worked very hard to do that and you are well on your way the light I want to talk about the light you have it's popping in my head I want to talk about the light there is it's it's beautiful it's like swirling and it's white and it's purple and it's violet and it's pink and all those colors are swirling and they're all individual colors but yet they merge together at the same time white is the spiritual color pink is the heart color Color. violet and purple for me go with the spiritual connections as well with that so Arlene amazing you are doing very well right now so I'm I'll leave you that so yeah that was good nice Arlene thanks okay so let me, I'm writing down people's names so that I don't get confused because you know how I, I go <laughs> uh, let's see who's gonna grab me right now let's see Oh, somebody grabbed me and then now they got they're gone oh poopers um, bum, bum, bum. Mary 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 Koval is your last name uh, I'm gonna go with you um, especially because you're going through some issues it seems okay um, now here here's the first thing that I feel actually Mary is I do feel your energy kind of um, draining a bit okay and I don't mean it's draining out of your body what I what that means to me is I feel your energy going within to strengthen yourself when I touch in with your energy your soul energy I feel such a great amount of responsibility with you I feel as though you 
your part of your soul's path, if you will, has been being responsible. And I feel like you've really been there for other people too, that you've been responsible for them or you feel responsible for other people, uh, which could bring me into a little bit of a trap for you if you're feeling responsible for other people is knowing where your boundaries are, where your energy is and not getting caught up in somebody else's energies. Sometimes when we get caught up in somebody else's energies, we want to fix, we want to help and we do put ourselves on the back burner and sacrifice our own energy. If something like that is going on, Mary, uh, I definitely want you to come into your energy more. I want to also tell you, Mary, to do, I want to um, have you work with some color to strengthen your energy and I want a, a deep blue color. Blue is the color of communication, the throat chakra. And I want a deep blue color for you because that's also to me feels like grounding for you. And to use color uh, to replenish our energy or for any other purposes that we want to use color, we can find something of that deep blue color and hold it. We can meditate on it. We can envision it in our heads and meditate on it. That way um, we can uh, feel the color blue and what that would feel like to us and really breathe it in and that can help um, if you have issues going on blue also is the color of calm and can help you um, uh, let go of some things and not hold on to stuff and Okay. And with the responsibility part for you, you are the kind of, because you are the kind of person that has felt so responsible. In a way, it's like you have to give yourself permission to take care of yourself. So take, give yourself permission to take care of yourself. It's very important. You have a very kind and loving presence in your soul as well. Um, you truly are there for other people as well, just like whoever I just talked to. <laughs> you're, you're like that too. Okay, I will leave you that, Mary, and let me know what you think about that. Uh, okay, now here's an interesting. Where does our soul connect to in the body, or in the body, or above the body? Um, I always feel it in my heart. Is what I feel, and I also feel that my soul is like my whole energy, so within my body and around my energy. So I always feel it in here. Um, Samuel, question. Oh, and then write your question down on here, Samuel, from last. Last week <laughs> I have so I had so many questions um, what ha, my ha, has a plan for me at this point my soul has a plan for me so let's talk to you Samuel um, let's talk to you and we're gonna talk about you hmm, awesome good okay good you have a very compassionate soul you also are very intuitive yourself and you have a lot of empathy so compassion intuitive and empathy you're very good with energy it's taken you a while to get here but you're here and because you are so um, aware uh, that awareness I'm wondering if sometimes you that awareness Samuel has been overwhelming like do you all of a sudden you're going about your day and all of a sudden uh, things can feel overwhelming. Are you picking up other energies all over the place and stuff? Um, I'm wondering about that. Just because you are so aware and your energy is very open. Are you in a helping field too, Samuel? Um, oh boy, you guys have such great questions. Um, are you, are you in a helping field? Uh, become going to scrolling down to see. Um, because if I'm wondering, you have to be just with your energy and if you're not that may be part of oh, there you are <laughs> thank you Samuel um, no you're not in a helping field okay because there is such a feeling of you being there and helping people and I'm really wondering what's gonna show up for you what how you're going to influence and help other people I have such a strong impression of you being there for other people and doing and guiding them in a way uh, so I love this so if that makes some sense to you we will see uh, and uh, da, da, da. yeah I don't know what's going on with the stars I don't know why the stars don't work like they should it's very strange uh, okay now somebody had a good thing here and I saw it and I want to go back up here oh 
Hold on. Just be pa pa patient. Oh, poopers. It's, it's gone again, too. Um, let's go with Mindy. Um, stuck since your husband's passing. Has your husband... Oh, interesting. Okay, now grief. Remember grief is going to keep us, is going to keep us there um, until, until we're not, basically. Um... And when we have grief, of course, it does take some time to process through that. And grief is such a big, big emotion. And we must always allow ourselves the time to get into that energy and experience it and not block it, not stop ourselves from uh, processing things. But Mindy, you have, you are a, a gentle soul. You are a very nurturing person you're kind you are the person that is is there for everyone else too maybe that's going to be our theme this week um you have a a lot of there's a lot of joy within your soul you want to experience joy and and you know since your husband's passing i'm i would assume that you you may not have had as much joy as you would but i know that your husband part of the reason he was with you was that you had that joy and you helped him feel happy and secure and you helped him be seen and felt and i know he would express great gratitude for that to you in your kindness and your joy with that sense of being there for others as well um i i do see you out there with other people helping and guiding them as well i'm wondering if you're a little stubborn and don't like people helping you um i'm wondering about that sometimes when somebody is a giver and wants to be there for people uh, and they're kind and caring that way they they kind of want to take care of themselves and they don't want to ask other people for guidance um, or assistance or anything and I'm wondering about that because I want to give you the impression of reaching out to others uh, because that will help you get unstuck is what I'm being told so I hope that is helpful for you Mindy okay Mary says that was so true from ages ago when I was talking Ah, oh. okay. Amy, how does the good come from all of the bad shock, hurt, and figuring things out? Such a good question and probably too heavy for me to do briefly, but I'm going to give it a whirl anyway. When things happen in our lives, the bad, we'll label it bad with quotes, the shock, the figuring things out, so much of what happens in our lives is is a way for our soul to again be revealed to us when something happens in our lives in the physical realm here um, we have to learn how to handle it of course right but sometimes it helps us prioritize what's most important in our lives sometimes it helps us get clarity on our dreams and goals and who we want to be so in a way and this is just a thought popping into my head right now I might change my mind tomorrow but it's, since it's popping in I'm assuming it's coming from spirit I'm really feeling this sense of the bad, the shock, the hurt, and all those other things, figuring stuff out, is actually a releasing of energies that are in our way, that are no longer serving us. It's helping us get rid of stuff so that our soul can be revealed. And Amy, you have a great deal of resilience and vulnerability within your your aura and your soul's energy you have a great deal of that resilience in there where you you just keep going one foot in front of the other but you also have that vulnerability as well because there is that sensitive side that you have um, which is quite beautiful and and people really appreciate your sensitivities and how you're there for others it's really quite beautiful with this and with this that resilience and vulnerability at the same time it's like your light 
<laughs> I'm going to say your light is stubborn. Your light just keeps staying and glowing and getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, your energy is really quite beautiful. Nice question. Thank you, Amy. I will continue on and see what else we got. Hmm. Okay, the... <laughs> well, thanks for trying, Joe, to send the stars. I don't know what goes on there. Penny, is my soul upset with me for the choices I have or haven't made? I'm very tired and sad a lot. Now, of course, um, being married to a therapist, I must say that if you're depressed, uh, you might want to see a professional, a uh, mental health professional who could help you with uh, legit depression and maybe give you some uh, strategies or different ways to move through that or help you with that. Um, and two, Penny, your soul is not upset with you at all because your soul is the love and is the light from the divine, remember? So your soul is never going to be upset with you. Your soul will do its best it can, so to speak, to encourage you, to point you in the right direction, to reassure you, to tell you to love yourself to be your light as much as possible life can be very hard can't it and so penny don't don't keep affirming to yourself that life is hard okay we all know it's hard but what we don't want to do if we can is say oh my life is so hard my life is so hard my life is so hard because what we're doing is we're using an emotion to intend that our life is so hard. And I don't want to make it sound like I'm trivializing a depression or struggling for people who have mental illnesses or who have depression or ex are feeling extreme anxiety these days, which is so many people. So I'm not trivializing that. From my, my, my experiences as a coach and a medium and a teacher, is to be very aware of our words and try to use our words and i hate the word try to use our words to strengthen our power and for you penny i might suggest that you use an intention that is i am light i am light and love to strengthen that light that you have within you this doesn't mean i'm minimizing diminishing dismissing anything that's going on in your life but if you were to every day, every morning, say to yourself, I am light and love and feel what that would feel like. Can you imagine what that would feel like? If you really believed you were light and love, you would feel so light and loving. Your energy might start to shift for you. You have so many fine qualities, Penny. And just because you've had difficulties in this life, um, it's just that your energy's gotten a little bit off because of that and perfectly normal, perfectly natural. So for you, moving into the light and the love as much as possible and breathing it in. You might benefit from the help me prayer as well, the one where we surrender and we ask the divine to guide us and help us. That can help. Uh, Beverly, I just came to send you light and love. You guys are awesome. And send some there too. Okay, I shall. When you are in your soul's essence, when you feel like your soul, and this applies to everyone, okay? When you're in your soul's essence, that feeling is is light, is love. It's just that it's hard to describe it with words, but once you've experienced it, it's amazing. And we, um, Greg and I, are going to be offering a free class in January where you will get to experience that soul's light and love within yourself. We are going to do that. And don't worry, I'll let you know when it's coming. It'll be on my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com, BeCourageouslyYou.com. And if you want to be notified of these things, you can sign up right on the bottom of pretty much any page. I think you can sign up for my mailing list and you get um, Secrets to a Meaningful Life as a free download. Or you can go to my book page and you can download a chapter one. So just go to my website, go to book, 
go right there, wait a couple seconds, the sign up form will appear and you can download chapter one of my book for free and that will also get you on my mailing list so that you'll know when we have these special events coming up because we do have these special events coming up for you guys that we have been planning and planning. It's going to be so much fun and so cool to feel that soul's presence so you can be yourself as much as possible. Okay, going back into this. Okay, I love you guys trying to figure out how to send stars to me. I don't know why it's not working. When I clicked on it, it worked. <laughs> Mindy, yes, I'm the stubborn. I love it. Okay, okay, Lori, good question. Why are empathy people drawn to narcissist person? I have a theory on this. Now, I teach an empath workshop pretty much every summer, and this one coming up this summer is going to be called Empath Survival Guide. So we're going to give you empath survival strategies so that you can stay in your power. I have a theory that we as empaths, and I am an empath, have been drawn to narcissists because we as empaths lots of times have a tendency to give too much, to want to help too much. We feel what's going on with other people and we want to be there for them. We also have a tendency to let things slide a little bit and go, well, you know, that's okay. And we don't have firm boundaries sometimes. So narcissists are in our lives to help us get back to our soul's presence to be who we truly are. Narcissists actually are a gift to us. I know that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But they're actually a gift to us because it makes us realize what is important, what our boundaries are, what acceptable behavior is. You know, I had a relationship with a narcissist who was quite the gaslighter. By the end of that relationship, I had no clue what was even real anymore. It was like I was living in the twilight zone. It was wild. So it took a little while for me to get back to myself and reconnect with my truth again. So narcissists actually help us become more of who we are at our soul level. And when we start to look at that relationship that way, we can start to disentangle and not get so caught up in trying to make them see our point of view because they're never going to see it or trying to make them apologize to us because they're never going to apologize to us because in their view, they did nothing wrong. So it's just the way it is. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Ah, it's craziness. Okay, Amy, good. I'm glad that made sense to you. Okay, let's see. Ooh, yes, I'm going to go with you, Allie. Yes, Penny, stop being so hard on yourself. I knew it. I knew it. You've got to give yourself kindness. So, Ellie, can depression anxiety issues be related to energetic sensitivity? Absolutely, in my opinion. Greg may have an opinion on that. Um, I believe so because I myself have had times where I've struggled a bit with depression and anxiety. And the more uh, sensitive I have become as I've gotten older, I have become much more aware about the value of protecting my energy. I have to be so careful about what I watch on TV, what I read in the news, what I do, whom, who I'm with. I have to be so careful with that. And I do believe, and it's kind of like musicians and creative people and artists. Uh, there's a stereotype out, out there, which may be true, that musicians and artists, those creative types, tend to struggle with mental things because, you know, we are just in that different kind of flow. You know, we're in that creative side of our mind. And that seems to also connect with the sensitivities, which also connects with mental illnesses, anxiety, depression, and extreme sensitivities. So, yes. Um, yes. So, Greg has, has a comment in case people can't see it um, at, at this moment. The only caution would be not to use it to shove down your feelings. Allow them to flow when you need to. So, getting through grief and not being hard on yourself, those kinds of things. Um, oh, thank you, Paula. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm very peaceful. That was actually my intention for today a little bit. Oh, yes, Karen, your friend will absolutely come and visit you. Um, yes, it's going to be an awesome class, the one we're going to do then. Um, yes, we are starting. I might as well give you a heads up on this because we are going to be 
uh, hopefully in the next week or two, and I, I know I've mentioned it before, we're going to do it again. We are starting a spiritual empowerment online community. And we are going to be asking you very soon what you would like to have in this spiritual empowerment online community. We have a hundred ideas easily to teach and talk about, very similar to what we do here, but also we're going to be doing a workshop every month. We're going to be doing experiences. We're going to do all sorts of fun stuff. And so we'll be sending some stuff out by my email and also on social media. So we'll be doing that and you can let us know what you would like. So we are going to start this online community uh, um, early next year. It's going to be awesome and people will be able to be there. <laughs> yes, if you guys only knew what we're, I just started talking about it. Let's see. Let me see who else I can. You checked all the boxes on the empath. Let me see who else I want to talk to. Ah, oh, the star page comes up and says it's not available. Poof. Gosh, who knows? Maybe I better check my settings. Somebody remind me. I'll remember when I go through the comments tomorrow. Oh, you definitely have to come back to Layla Dale. Um, big changes. Yes, thank you. For, thank you for liking my energy. I've worked a lot on my energy. Yeah. Uh, Penny, you may very well be an empath. She just says she puts herself out to work her family, her home family, and place her own needs last. That's my tiredness. And that may mean you are an empath. And I would suggest definitely if you are able to do something, you know, like my coaching program where you can get your strength back, your power back, that would be very helpful. I had somebody um, a couple years ago who she was just very similar to what you're saying now. And she said she, she got her spark back just from doing that class. Um, if it works for you, if not this year, then maybe next year and so I'll remind you all about my coaching program the deadline for early bird is December 1st at midnight hundred dollars off a free 30-minute coaching and a little gift bag which will be so much fun but go to my website you can see more about that and see if it's right for you especially you guys who are struggling a bit the, the program is limited to a few number of people and I don't have a lot of spaces left but I do have some space right now I know people tend to wait till the last minute so we'll see what happens there um, Ah, workshops are live posts with regards to past lives. Jacqueline, what timing you have at my retreat. I have an in-person retreat the first weekend in June in Lilydale, and Greg is actually going to do a group past life regression in the retreat. Won't that be fun? He is a past life regressionist, Greg Unterberger, past life regressionist, and he does them online. So if anybody wants to do one, uh, you can contact him right through here. He'll find you, and um, you can make an appointment with him for past life regression. So we are going to do that at my retreat in June, and he also does it too. Ah, Darlene, yes, we are all. And let's talk about the sensitivity for a minute, and then I'll do another reading. And um, Because of the consciousness shift happening, everybody is 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 more sensitive now. Uh, the sensitivity is coming up, and the sensitivity is part of our energetic connection to the divine universal energy. It is our soul, and it's coming up. And that's why people are so touchy now. Have you noticed? Oh, my goodness. People are so touchy or people just fly off the handle and they're trying to control other people it's their own fear so our sensitive uh, sensitivities are coming up for those of you who follow me or uh, the other radio shows here in Lilydale um, I expect you all are a little bit more sen sensitive than the average normal person out there which is wonderful so you get to learn how to to handle your energy and how, what you can do to help other people and that doesn't mean you go out there and tell them how to live just by being in your light helps them live their best life as well. And your sensitivities will help you more and more and more. Uh, every time you comment anything I've texted here, you start to break up again. Well, that's funny, Mary. Maybe it's your tech and not mine. <laughs> uh, you can change things in your environment to help balance your light and decrease anxiety and depression. Absolutely. The first thing I suggest if you want to, to help with anxiety, depression, your sensitivities, make sure you have as much light as possible. I have a bit of seasonal affective disorder, so I do have a sunbox that I use if I remember most mornings, and I suggest that for anybody who struggles during the winter time. I also suggest that you clear your space, okay? My office right now, if I showed you what this looked like, you guys would not believe it. It's its just a disaster zone in here because I haven't had time to deal with it. Other priorities. Um, but if you clear your space, that will help you feel more under control and your energy will expand as well. Another thing you can do is using essential oils in an aromatherapy kind of way. You can do that. Uh, there, You can also... Um, 
candles are very good for that as well sage sage spray or sage the kind you light uh, that can help to get your light up as well and also some really good music out there now that can help uh, you know the more new agey music Jonathan Goldman for example has a lot of healing energy music and that can help balance things within your body taking the time to be still and listening to music taking the time to be still and breathing uh, that is really essential I tend to get really really busy and I don't sometimes get my still time in until like right before I'm gonna do something with somebody so that's essential to do okay let's see we need to do another soul reading because I haven't done one yet and it's almost nine o'clock okay now before I get to the, the another soul reading do you want me to continue on with questions and soul readings next week you guys have so many awesome questions and I only answered some of them today I could probably make a book about this maybe I'll make a little downloadable ebook for you but anyway if you want me to do this again next week you can ask more questions about the soul whatever I can do soul readings again right in here if you want me to do them again um, oh thank you for signing up for my email newsletter yeah it's I send out an email once a week I'll send out a little a couple more um, when things start picking up for our, our spiritual empowerment group and for the free class that we're gonna do oh you're gonna love that you guys you're just gonna love that three days at least of free classes it's gonna be amazing uh, yes, Ailey, creating boundaries is essential, especially if you're a medium or a healer or anything like that. You have to have your boundaries, and we tend not to, don't we? Um, soul reading, soul reading. Yeah, I should have given Lori a soul reading while I was there. Lori, I'm back at you. Call uh, soul reading for you. Let me do it. Do this. Um, uh, okay, I'm just reading the comment below you right now. Ooh, good questions. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Lori, you have, at your soul level, you have quite the focus. You can really focus on stuff, okay? When you make a decision, you make a decision and you go for it. You, you just go for it. You have very high standards for yourself and other people, which has tripped you up on occasion. And you also have... Um, a great deal of capacity here that's a bad bad sentence sorry of uh, cutting through the crap <laughs> you have a huge capacity for cutting through the crap what is that discernment you have a huge capacity for discernment and so for you there is a sense of of I, I'm feeling it being told to me of discerning what is most important to you and making sure you're checking in with what your priorities are what your truth is what you really want out of life you have that discernment quality um, there is also a little bit on the edge this is interesting I see your soul a little differently than I'm seeing other because I'm seeing like like groups, if you will. There's a little bit here of forgiveness, and I feel that that part of you needs to be strengthened. Uh, forgiveness of yourself, forgiveness of others, um, uh, letting go of things and recognizing what is truly most important and focusing on those things and letting the rest go. Yeah, you've got all sorts of little different things in there I said about your soul, Lori. That's a good one. Hmm, how fun. Okay, so Therese asked, how can we help our children, students who are experiencing the super sensitivity, I'm flying, that was bad, and are flying off with crazy energy they can't control. So much hyperactivity and anger. Yeah, and a lot of adults have it too. And for those of us who are sensitive, how do we protect our energy with that too, right? How do we stay strong? So me, my normal answer, set an intention in the morning of how you're going to protect your energy. You're not going to let the negative come into your field. Okay, set that first to strengthen your energy. With the students now, teaching them how to breathe, pause and breathe and I don't mean you teach them how to meditate 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 um, though that certainly would be a good thing if you have the opportunity to teach a little bit of meditation but to teach them to stop and breathe check in with themselves okay so they pause they've got to learn to pause I was a teacher for 30 whatever years okay and I remember when the kids would get on certain days of the year and it was like okay let's pause for a second and let's stop and breathe so they can become more mindful of how they're really feeling 
this sensitivity is something. And so we have to also try to take into account what's what's going on around them in their lives. I know we can't change things at their houses, of course, but we can control our classrooms. We can control what's what's there and minimize um, distractions. Um, I know when I was teaching, it was really big to have a lot of information on the walls, you know, a lot of posters and that kind of thing. And for this, I'm getting a very clear impression that we need to kind of minimize that and maybe have it be a little less on the wall so there's not quite so much in there and if people have that in their walls because it's too much stimulation basically um, and making sure the colors in the room uh, correspond with calmness which would be light blue generally I might do a very pale kind of green or pink um, as well uh, green is a healing color goes with the how the heart as does the pink um, and the blue is the calm and the communication together so kind of a light blue having colors around there uh, that could really help um, and yeah and modeling of course as much as you can um, for you okay yes you want me to do the keep doing this I like all your yeses I know it's kind of fun isn't it it really is um, please continue okay thank you um, okay now this is an interesting question Laura Fer Ferrero, sorry, I'm I'm in I'm in channeling land that I can't read. I feel like my soul showed up for me in someone else. Is this possible? What an interesting question. Um, let me do a soul reading first and see what happens. Um, see how that comes through. Huh. Okay. I'm a big feeler when I touch into people for these things or when I touch into them for readings, mediumship readings or soul readings or whatever, I feel people's energies. And so, Laura, I feel such an expansiveness with your energy. I feel a very openness. I feel a very open-hearted energy with you. You definitely are a person who acts on your love and your kindness. Um, I do feel that people have taken advantage of you in the past and that it has been a little bit of a hard lesson for you to learn to protect your own energy. Uh, the idea, I got to go with this and see what comes out of my mouth. The idea of your soul showing up for you in someone else is very curious to me. I'm taking that to mean that you're seeing soul qualities in another person that you relate to and resonate with. And uh, what I'm going to say is that if you resonate with somebody else's qualities, you admire someone else's qualities, those are your qualities. You have them. Um, sometimes people talk about twin flames. Uh, and my understanding of that is that, uh, and I don't know if this is correct by whoever's standard, is that our soul has broken up, if you will, into two people. And so we meet our twin flame and our souls feel complete. Personally, I kind of go, ah, on that. Okay. It just doesn't, that doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't feel like the truth to me, but that's my opinion. You guys believe it. It's your opinion. You go with what feels right to you. So I would wonder if this, your soul, so to speak, showing up for you yourself in someone else, that that person's soul is actually helping to reflect back to you who you really are so you can truly embrace it so think on that and see how you feel about that and when I write down the questions that you guys have asked today when I write them down tomorrow it will be really fun to see if something else pops into my head uh, okay da, 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 okay that made sense good <laughs> uh. okay um, Amy, so you don't even need to sign up for these live chats. I just do them every week on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. unless I'm traveling. Um, okay. Let's see. I, since it's after 9, I should probably actually stop talking. Maybe I better just stop. I don't want to hang you guys out here too long. So, uh, what else do we have to tell you? Just thank you so much for coming. You can connect with me at my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com. 
BeCourageouslyYou.com. And you can also check out my Courageously You group coaching program uh, in case you're interested in that. Early Bird, as I said, ends Thursday at midnight, $100 off the normal price. It's an awesome opportunity to help you be the best version of you and live your happiest life. And that's I think that's about it. Oh, the, the Hopeful Holidays. If you haven't signed up yet, uh, you can do that. Uh, Greg posted the link up earlier, or you can go to my website, look for the book book now page or the link there and you can see it right on there and it's free uh friday night at seven o'clock so you guys have a wonderful night and all of that uh that's a good question mary could that be someone she knew in a past life it certainly could it certainly could so thank you so much for joining me and i will do this again next week why not and i think i'm just going to bring a whole list of questions but you guys if you start talking i'm just going to start answering them as quickly as possible and i'll intersperse with soul readings for you how about that and i think that'll be wonderful so you guys have an amazing night i'll see you guys later bye